What's going on guys? My name is Mr. Hurricane and welcome to MLB 13 The Show Diamond Dynasty. When I got this game yesterday, I wanted to try this mode out. I had never played it before in MLB 12, so I wanted to try it this year and it is a lot of fun. I'll say that right off the bat. If you don't know much about Diamond Dynasty, basically, you have your own team. It's like Ultimate Team in other games, but it's different. You get to customize your uniforms and your logo on every little aspect of your team. Here I am trying to make my uh, cheap ripoff of the Miami Marlins logo. I did not actually go with this logo. I made a pretty good one later, I think, and I don't like the way it looked here, so I wanted to completely redo it, but... um. Basically, in Diamond Dynasty, here is a list of my roster right here, and you might not recognize any of these players because, well, they're not real. They're Dynasty players that you can train and customize and make your own as you build your team and take on other people online or computerized teams, and it's a lot of fun. I got into it yesterday, and I put a few hours, actually, into customizing my team and building my roster, and I had a lot of fun. I did buy a pack, and then I noticed here my card management, I already had some MLB players, so I'm like, oh, Cole Hamill. So I already have a starting pitcher there. It was my ace. So here I was starting my lineup or setting it. And I had like Tony Gwynn Jr., Alex Rios, and Alex Gordon. I got lucky in a pack and I got like an entire outfield. So I put those guys in my starting lineup. But the rest of the lineup was basically dynasty players. And then I also had Brandon Ange that I put in at third base. But I was really excited when I got into this. And I realized how much depth there was to Diamond Dynasty. And how I could customize my logo and all my gear. Now here is... Little speed art, I guess you could call it, of me going through and customizing the real, uh, well, not real, but it's my Minnesota Massacre logo. Now, I'm not sure if this series is going to become part of, like, a main series on my channel. I'm just really getting this out because the game is brand new and I had a lot of fun playing and I wanted to share it with you guys. If you guys wanted more Diamond Dynasty, I could bring it to you. You know, lately on my channel, I've mostly focused on Sammy Holland's Road to Glory, UTSA Dynasty, and Raiders CCM. But maybe this could become part of the rotation or be a weekend series or something. But I'm not sure yet. I'll see how you guys enjoy this, but I had fun playing it personally. And now here is the finalized sheet of the Minnesota Massacre and you'll see the uniforms I customized here in just a moment so we go from that poor logo that's the robot for the Marlins to my shield with the same font but there wasn't much options for font so I had to choose that one it was the only one that even looked cool or non-generic and I customized my uniforms I like these a lot I spent some good time making a set I liked here and if you can tell I really like the Sammy Hollins high school uniforms I made there and I carried over basically the same colors into my Diamond Dynasty here on MLB 13 the show so I wanted to get into a game and I couldn't get into an online head-to-head -head game against a person so I just decided to play against the computer on veteran difficulty just to get my feet wet a little bit get used to the mode and so I'm playing against the Minnesota Twins at some spring training field and of course Mike's starting ace pitcher Cole Hamels gets us introduced to the game by striking out twin center fielder Darren Mastriani and you can see just another look of my beautiful uniform design that I have created and here is my starting lineup. The first at bat in the history of the Minnesota Massacre is going to be the one and only Tony Gwynn Jr. who takes the single right back up the middle and will get on base. And so the rest of this video is going to be gameplay of my team against the Minnesota Twins. Here's Julio Quezada. I love some of the names they gave me here to work with some of these players. I didn't customize them, any of them myself. I have thought about changing some of the names of players or some of their appearances, but for now, I like it. And oh boy, here we go. We got a drive to the gap by Alex Rios and Tony Gwynn Jr. will come all the way around to score the Minnesota Massacre is up one nothing over the Minnesota Twins. And then I got Alex Gordon. The top of my lineup is pretty stacked with my three MLB players. I go Tony Gwynn Jr., Julio Quezada, the random guy I put at shortstop, and then I go Alex Rios and Alex Gordon. And obviously the game is brand new. I just wanted to get a feel for it, and uh, I got in a groove early. I hit another gapper over here, and that's a lame attempt at getting to the baseball. So that's going to end up being a triple. Another run scores, and the massacre has begun. There's the triple by, I forget who. And now, here is the all-star of this team in the thumbnail of this video. You're probably really confused. Who is this grandpa with the blonde beard? His name is Chet Vick. I didn't customize this, folks. I can't make this stuff up. It's Chet Vick. He's got the blonde beard with black sideburns. Looks like he's 80 years old. 
and he gets the RBI in his first plate appearance. What a guy, Chet Vick. 4 nothing now as we're in the top of the second inning, and I'm just dealing some really mean pitches. There's Justin Morneau just staring at a backwards K, and we're going to go again. Cole Hamels, it, oh, that cutter is nasty. That's not even fair. Cole Hamels is good. I have no idea how I got him on my team, but uh, Cole Hamels and I got acquainted here very early, and now here is the range of Tony Gwynn Jr. I honestly thought that was going to be a double or a triple or a ground rule double, but he caught up to it no problem. And now, here is the first home run. Alex Gordon hits this one in right center, out of the park for a home run, and the Twins have no idea what hit him. So, with Diamond Dynasty, I know you get these MLB players like the ones I have, but they only have like 10 games of availability and plus first off the presentation looks awesome with my logo and how they implement that that's beautiful and then Chet Vick strikes out but it's okay because he's like 90 years old and back to what I was talking about before I don't think you can renew the contracts and keep around players for longer than they're available that's the one downfall right now because what if I build Chet Vick into an all-star 90 year old five tool super god at baseball and then I have to stop using him after like 35 40 games that's gonna kind of be disheartening but uh, yeah always have the new wave of players coming in after that I guess but I don't know that's kind of the downfall I think but maybe it'll be okay I haven't really decided what I want to do with this mode completely it was a lot of fun I've played a little bit more I want to get more content on my channel of this and especially if you guys enjoy it I do three main series right now and they're all football I've kind of been known for being a football channel but I do do some other things I've done one baseball series in the past which was my flash Jackson road to the show which I kind of ended nonchalantly last year just by kind of not posting it anymore I kind of lost interest in playing it and I was really bad at it partly because I was so stubborn with my gameplay I was playing veteran difficulty for hitting and I wouldn't turn it down even though I wasn't good at it at all and here's Chet Vick again, and this time, a single through the left side. Trevor Plouffe can't reach out and snag it, so Chet Vick has his first career hit. Look at his face! Look at that face! Oh my goodness! Oh man. So I had to, I had to kind of collect myself after seeing Chet Vick and his blonde beard and the black sideburns. There's this, this creature that was placed upon my Diamond Dynasty team, and... I really like this game so far, and I'm enjoying Diamond Dynasty. I've gone through and I've played more games, and I want to play more. So if you guys want to see more Diamond Dynasty, uh, leave likes, comments, all that stuff lets me know you want to see more. And I can definitely bring more. Maybe I, I'm trying to find a good rotation for series on my channel. I've been doing a lot of UTSA Raiders and Sammy Hollins, like I said before. Now, on the weekends, I like to do off-topic things, and I basically... Um, just do random things on the weekends and so maybe Diamond Dynasty can become like a series I only do on the weekends or something but just let me know what you guys think in the comment section feedback will play a big factor in this but if you haven't noticed in the gameplay now things are starting to get a little interesting in the top of the eighth thing there's a single through the middle one run will score runner holds up at third base and so now we have the ever so dangerous number nine hitter Pedro Florimon as he is the tying run at bat now after we're up seven to one how does he go opposite field for a gapper that's gonna clear the bases as the runners go around third base and Florimon is in with a double and we're about to blow this game and give Cole Hamels a no decision and so Lamont led better on the 0-2 pitch, and he's got Cleet Thomas looking. That's a strikeout. That'll be two outs. So now 3-2 count for the next batter at the plate. Still runner in scoring position. It's a deep fly ball to center field, but Alex Rios goes back, and he's got it at the track, back at the wall, and we hold on to our one-run lead. And now look to save the game with Steve Ciszek in the ninth inning. One run difference now after being up 7-1 to one and the dangerous Jamie Carroll at the plate. Already three singles in the game looking for number four. But the 0-2 pitch and he can't catch a change up as a string is pulled. And he waves at it. Now Joe Maurer with an 0-1 count and he grounds out to second base. We'll take care of that. Now we're one out away from a victory. And the batter is Josh Willingham, looks at a sinker, checks the swing, it's an 0-2 count now. And we're going to go with my nemesis pitch. The slider away, and he swings and misses, and the Minnesota Massacre come away with a victory in their first ever game in the Diamond Dynasty. And this was a lot of fun to play, honestly. I like Diamond Dynasty a lot. The customization is great, 
and I think I'm going to really like this mode if I get into it more. But player of the game is Alex Gordon. He went yard once for us, and I get 6 million budget coins for that victory. So anyways, guys, that is my introduction to Diamond Dynasty. I could bring more if you guys want to see it, but just let me know, and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.